the APS was founded in uh, 1743 by Benjamin Franklin and a group of his scientific-minded friends. It's the oldest learned society in the country. Um, it was designed with enlightenment values of trying to spread knowledge and useful knowledge across what was then the colonies, then what became the United States. The APS is still a, a membership organization. We have over 900 members uh, worldwide. We have a number of departments. We have the museum. We're officially actually the library and museum of the APS. Uh, we have a publications department. We give many grants, a uh, million dollars a year in grants. So we're still promoting useful knowledge in many ways. Well, the first challenge was um, structural capacity. This building was constructed, even though it looks like it's a colonial building, it was uh, constructed in 1950. So it's three-course concrete construction on the library floors. We uh, don't have all of the structural drawings so we weren't exactly sure how much capacity the floors had, um, but instead uh, found a way to um, determine what the loading was more accurately on the floors um, in a way that did actually prove to be code compliant and safe, um, not just safe. So uh, we were able to uh, come up with a solution that allowed us to put in the dense pack um, and to satisfy our concerns about safety and code compliance. Well, just quite a process to finally get to the point where it could actually begin construction. And we had to go through a lot of iterations. The big thing was whether we had to move, I don't know how many thousand linear feet of stuff off site. Would we have to do that? And fortunately, uh, we had uh, a good contractor who was able to figure out to keep everything in building. It might not have been accessible, but we didn't have to worry about transporting it, uh, moving you know, this material that's simply irreplaceable, uh, having to worry about security um, and just simply the safety of it. We didn't have to particularly worry about that. We were full up. <laughs> we couldn't figure out where to put anything else, basically. To move forward in this, one of the things uh, uh, we had to do at the end of the project was to put everything in proper order that we'd put elsewhere temporarily because we couldn't put it where it belonged because there wasn't any room. So the, the main thing really was we were simply out of room. You know, we could probably cram a few more things in, but a collection that's a hundred linear feet, uh, if we'd have done that, I don't know what we'd have done, frankly. <laughs> it was really getting tight. So that was the mover. Well, and there's also a lot of collections coming in that are scientific based. You know, 20th century scientists create a lot of data. We've had some collections come in three, four hundred linear feet. So, I mean, those possibilities are out there and we wouldn't want to pass one of them up just because we didn't have enough space. Right. So that was definitely the driver. Because of the way this worked, we, could, we wanted to empty out an entire floor so that we could remove the asbestos flooring and replace that as part of the installation of the shelving system. The old space that we had was just a makeshift, uh, a makeshift space that we had and it was the only one available to us. And so when I was told that we were going to have this new space, I really wanted to think really broadly about um, what, we really, what the collection really needed, what was, what was missing in our old storage space, and um, how we can think about future growth. So um, for me, it was also really about protecting the art better. Things like the painting racks, um, being in um, wooden painting racks as opposed to uh, wired racks where we can hang the objects, where we can have visitors see objects without having to pull them out. That was really important to me. Um, having a storage space in which we could actually manage the collection by objects and material as opposed to where they fit. That was really important to me too, and I think that um, all those things that we sort of talked about and identified are going to help make that possible. I just say great job to all of us. This was a really good project. It ended up, um, like I say, it's not just on time on budget. Um, I think what you'll hear from the APS staff when you talk with them is um, they're very happy with the way this job turned out. Look, there was a lot of pivoting that had to happen. Um, I felt. Uh, DSS and, and Alan and everyone else worked really hard to sort of walk, get us through the problems that appeared uh, whenever they appeared. COVID was very difficult to sort of manage, you know, like getting materials here, um, you know, making sure enough workers were around. I mean, all that stuff was handled by you. Um, you know, and the system looks great because of it. One of the things is when a problem did arise, there was no hesitation about addressing it. And also, we finished on time. <laughs> I don't know if you want to complain about anything, but the fact is those are two 
the two big things when you get into the construction project, right? Address problems as they come up and make sure you finish on time and in budget. How can you complain about that? We were trying to get, you know, maximum amount of storage in a pretty finite space. And I think we really max it. Even to the fact that we saw that we had extra and now we're getting more space. I mean, that, that was even a bonus. And that's just going to be used for, um, you know, supplies. Well, look, I'd say like, we stand on the shoulders of giants here at the APS. You know, we're collecting things that are very important, but like our forefathers were, you know, Franklin, Jefferson. Um, we're doing really, I think, really good work here. But the sort of foundation of what we do is bring in boxes of material. We need a place for them. So like, this project was essential to what we do. Without having a place to put the stuff that we acquire, we can't do our jobs. So it's foundational in every which way of what we do here. So it seems simple, but it's actually extremely important.